company has been avoiding paying tax in the United Kingdom by claiming its entire operation is run out of South Australia. And it gets stranger. When we tracked down the address, the international headquarters, we found something bizarre is going on in the house of L. Ron Hubbard. Missing financial records, missing millions. Stunning authorities into action. Brian Seymour has this world exclusive. <laughs> I find this news really upsetting. Welcome to the home of Scientology, Britain and Europe. Adelaide? Are you aware that your house is a major headquarters for the Church of Scientology? No, no. it's disgraceful. I feel disgraceful. Well, I think it should certainly be investigated, and if it's found that they haven't paid taxes, then I hope that they're um, prosecuted and pursued for it. In Britain, the Church of Scientology is supposed to pay tax on the millions of pounds it brings in each year. Why doesn't it? Because it claims the entire UK operation is part of its Australian outfit. Here, they are recognised as a religion, therefore they don't pay tax. Scientology is using that, combined with some lax laws covering incorporated associations, to avoid paying its dues in the old dart. It's a long way from Buckingham Palace, Big Ben and Great Britain's Houses of Parliament to South Australia's Parliament House, unless you're a Scientologist. Ten years ago, the authorities in Britain told the Church of Scientology, you have to pay tax, you are not a charity. Well, Scientology came up with an ingenious solution to avoid paying tax in the UK. They made the entire Church of Scientology in Britain a member of a tiny little association incorporated right here in South Australia. From its non-existent offices in Adelaide, South Australia, this tiny incorporated association boasts as its members not people but churches of Scientology. And not just in the United Kingdom. There's also Denmark, Belgium, France, Germany, Holland and Sweden. Why stop there? They have a member in South Africa too. We checked further and found a truly global multinational corporation boasting more members in Canada, including Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto and British Columbia. Scientology in Britain works hard to avoid paying tax. The Australian company they operate under is called the Church of Scientology Religious Education College Incorporated, or COSRECI. The British church, like all branches of Scientology, sells its books, tapes, courses and DVDs for a profit. And they employ a small army of so-called volunteers who work up to 80, even 100 hours a week. They are paid $50 a week. Well, in my experience, people actually don't join Scientology. It's, it's usually a case of being recruited. They'll often go along and do some kind of a personality test and then lo and behold, they find there's something wrong with them. And um, guess who's going to um, solve that problem? Scientology. Ian Howarth is the founder of Britain's Cult Information Centre. He's helped many trapped inside Scientology to escape. British citizens should not be paying Scientology's uh, bills, if you will. Um, Scientology should be paying taxes. Britain is in the throes of a terrible depression. That's about to get worse. With over two and a half million people out of work, the new government has savagely cut spending and is contemplating a rise in VAT, their goods and services tax. That is the only tax Scientology is exempt from paying in the UK. People are struggling to make ends meet and yet, allegedly, Scientology is not being paying taxes for many, many years. Um, you know, when I talk to families that are suffering, they're paying. Sometimes they pay financially. They certainly are paying emotionally. And I think it's about time that Scientology paid. Scientology is a long way from home. Adelaide is 16,259 kilometres from London. Still, the capital of South Australia does have a distinctively British feel, furnished with plenty of reminders of the old country. It might be fate that in Scientology's universe of planetary confederates and intergalactic warlords, they chose Adelaide, the city of churches. It's a case of follow the money and also show me the money. Show me the money! The independent senator Nick Xenophon is one of South Australia's favourite sons. He championed the former members of Scientology 
who spoke out about the abuse inflicted upon them. But this latest intrigue surprised even him. Senator, how surprised are you to learn that the Church of Scientology in the United Kingdom is run out of South Australia? You know, I'd like to think that the corporate regulators in the UK would be scratching their heads over this one. To say that the Church of Scientology in the UK is a South Australian charity seems pretty bizarre when you look at the evidence. That is precisely what Scientology does say. The group has not filed any financial records in South Australia, but they've provided unaudited accounts to companies house in Britain, in which they themselves claim the church is a South Australian charity and is established in England for charitable purposes only. The trustees consider that corporation tax should not therefore be applicable. When you look at the fact that the three directors are based in the UK, that returns haven't been filed for the South Australian entity in over 30 years, you've got to ask uh, what on earth is going on. Never in my wildest dreams could I imagine that the Church of Scientology's European and UK operations are based on a suburban home in Adelaide. We even tracked down the owners of the house listed on the article of incorporation as their address. Oh, we were surprised, I was surprised and um, I had no idea of it until today. The owners are a family who run a market gardening business. They have owned the property since long before Scientology declared it as their address. My parents have owned it for a number of years and uh, I'm unaware of that. My parents are Greek Orthodox and uh, we have no um, idea that uh, it was in the use in this way. Some time ago I was made aware of a former insider who may have information. Eventually I made contact and they spoke to me on the condition they remain anonymous. Why did they choose South Australia? This informant told me Scientology targeted South Australia. When they set up this association they trawled through the laws in each state to determine which one had the most laws requiring the least compliance. They also answered a more important question. What does this group produce? Do they employ any staff? It's a, it is a corporation. Uh, what's their business? They told me that the Church of Scientology Religious Education College Incorporated was set up as an umbrella corporation for the church in the UK and Europe. This organisation needs to be up front and say how much has been paid in so-called management fees who it's been paid to, in which country it's been paid to, what transfers have occurred from one country to another, and that's what the authorities need to be looking at. The Church of Scientology has to come clean on their books, they need to open their books. Scientology won't do that voluntarily. But why not do that? Is there something you've talked about with Mr Miscavige? Because uh, we're not obligated to. No, no, have, no, no we, you're not uh, obligated yeah, to. And, and, and we don't have any reason you, to. You don't pay tax? Right. Why not show the property? Well, no, that's not true. You pay property tax. You pay property Quite tax. Quite a bit. But, but, you, but there's a lot of tax you don't pay. Sure. Certainly in Australia. Along with tax all and... the other charitable organisations. In Los Angeles, I tried my hardest with Scientology's global spokesperson, Tommy Davis, to get some disclosure of how they manage their massive wealth. That's what I'm saying. Come with the financial records. Because Show me the balance sheet. Please. Because we have no obligation to, and there's, know, and there's know, plenty of religions that don't. Do it because you want to. It. Do it because you want to. You we want to be want up, to. up front. We open. don't want to. <laughs> you consider it's being not being upfront and I not just, being open. I consider it's being private. Well, I'm a journalist. It's my job have. to ask for this information. Sure. Um, that, that, that's it. I understand. That's, yeah. yeah. That's sure. But but that, that's that's an obvious question. You know, sure. why not why not publish a financial record? Sure. Because I think Elwin Hubbard I read was worth about 300 million when he died. He was a very successful author. Yeah. Yeah. And then he donated that back to the church. Key questions here include, if taxes are owed, are they owed to the British people or the Australian people? And could all of this be quite legal? We'll let the British and Australian authorities conduct their investigations and make a decision on that. One thing at least does seem very odd, that a group that ran and runs the Church of Scientology in Britain and other countries last worked out of an office here in Adelaide in a building right where I'm standing now, long since gone replaced by a lovely little Adelaide city park. Back in Blighty, people on the street we explained it all to were stunned. Call them, call them to a meeting and explain themselves and, and find out where, you, where, where they are paying tax or if not paying tax anywhere, kick them the hell out of the country. Yeah. Pleasant there. I think the government really needs to clamp down. I mean, they need to actually make sure that they do pay tax. And yeah, they really need to look into this and maybe launch some sort of inquiry, but definitely crack down on it. What action will you be taking now? 
I'll be meeting with the federal government later this week to brief them on this issue and to urge the government to give all cooperation, uh, all support to the UK government in their investigation. Brian Seymour reporting, and we invited the leaders of Scientology to be interviewed. They declined, but they have provided a brief statement, and you can read it on our website, yahoo7.com.au.